In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I'm Father Leo Hausman, the pastor of the Catholic Churches in Leed and Deadwood, and also the Vicar General of the Diocese of Rapid City. Let's call to mind our sins, asking for God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. In the highest. And on, on earth, earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. you. We, we give, give you thanks for your, your great glory. glory. Lord God, God, heavenly King, O God, God Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten God, Son, Lord, Lord God, God, Lamb of God, Son of, God, Son of the Father, Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, we, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim, Proclaim his, his marvelous, marvelous deeds to all the nations. nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim, Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations. Among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim, Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. nations. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim, Proclaim his, his marvelous, marvelous deeds to all the nations. nations. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing 
by the one spirit, to another mighty deeds, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another varieties of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does this concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, do whatever he tells you. Now, there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves good wine first. And then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, the second Sunday in Ordinary Time, we continue a theme from the Christmas season. That is, Jesus and his divinity being revealed to the world. First, he was revealed to the shepherds, then the Magi on the Epiphany, and last Sunday on the banks of the Jordan River at his baptism. In the Gospel passage read today, which we know as the second luminous mystery of the rosary, the wedding feast at Cana, Jesus' divinity is revealed in the miracle of changing the water into wine. In the Gospel of St. John, this is known as the first of seven signs in which Jesus reveals his divinity. The first reading from the prophet Isaiah and the Gospel carry a common theme symbolized by marriage. That is God binding himself to humankind in a covenant relationship. Throughout the Bible, Jesus, marriage is a symbol of covenant relationship between God and his chosen people. God is the faithful bridegroom and humanity is his beloved bride. Isaiah uses the metaphor of spousal love to describe God's love for Israel. God's fidelity to his people is compared to a husband's fidelity to his wife. Isaiah foresees God's salvation of Jerusalem after the return of the Babylonian exiles and visualizes it as a wedding between God and Jerusalem, but not Jerusalem as a city, 
but Jerusalem as a people. In the New Testament, such as at the Epiphany when Jesus' kingship and divinity is revealed to the non-Jewish Magi, God is making it clear that Jesus has come into the world for all people, Jews and Gentiles alike. In the light of the New Testament, Jerusalem symbolizes the church, consisting of all nations and all races, Jews and Gentiles alike. This gospel passage of the wedding feast at Cana is so rich in meaning and symbolism, which makes it impossible to address all in a one short homily. Cana is a village about eight miles northeast of Nazareth, the village where Jesus grew up. Jesus and his mother Mary are at a wedding feast, perhaps of a relative. When the wine runs short, Mary intervenes, pointing out the situation to Jesus, obviously believing Jesus can fix the, the problem miraculously. Jesus' response to Mary was, woman, how does the, your concern affect me? Calling her woman can seem a little sharp or even disrespectful to us. This, however, is to misunderstand the passage. Jesus twice addressed his mother with the title woman. The first time occurs here at the wedding feast in Cana when Jesus begins his public assault on Satan's kingdom. The second occurs, occasion occurs as Jesus defeats Satan on Calvary when he addresses Mary from the cross saying of John, woman, behold your son. These identifications connect Mary with the prophecy of Genesis 3.15, which is known as the first gospel or the first good news after the bad news of the fall of Adam and Eve. God said to the serpent after he lured Adam and Eve into sin, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Mary becomes the new Eve. Returning to the theme of covenant and marriage, marriage makes a family, and covenant makes people into the family of God. The Bible begins with one wedding, that of Adam and Eve in the garden, and ends with another, the marriage supper of the Lamb, in the book of Revelation. But the Last Supper anticipates the marriage supper of the Lamb. At Cana, Jesus turns water into wine. At the Last Supper, Jesus turns wine into himself. The Last Supper is perpetuated in every Mass celebrated, even to this day. By our participation in Mass, already now we are participating in the eternal wedding feast of heaven, of Christ, the bridegroom, and the church. This is a privilege of having, through our own baptism, been inserted into the new covenant, sealed by the blood of Jesus on the cross. Having entered into the new covenant by baptism, we are sons and daughters of God the Father and brothers and sisters of Christ. Mary, the new Eve, has become our spiritual mother who intercedes on our behalf like she did at Cana. Heaven becomes our eternal home. So let us proceed now joyfully to the wedding banquet of the Lamb, the Eucharist. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Now with confidence, we bring our petitions to the Father. For the church, that inspired by Mary's words, we may become better disciples by doing all that God asks of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our country, that God will heal the divisions and animosity that exists, help leaders to work together to address the issues of those who are suffering, and help us to better listen to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for a spirit of gratitude, that we may appreciate the abundance of God's generosity toward us and rely upon God who never tires of providing for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the needs and intentions of the faithful in the diocese, especially for the needs and concerns shared on the prayer cards during the annual diocesan appeal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are sick, that God's healing love will give them strength, relieve their suffering, and renew their spirits. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, that God will bring them into the fullness of life in God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, our Father, we are grateful for all the ways that you have blessed us in this life. We ask you to grant us all the good things that we need, particularly these needs that we have presented before you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good, good of all, all his holy, holy church. church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and, and the glory, glory are, are yours now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, you take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should that enter, you should enter under, under my roof, roof but, only but only say, say the, the word, and my, my soul, soul shall be healed. healed. We have come to know and to believe in the love that God has for us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those who have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.